Hi, this is Adam Deary with AdvancedDimensions.com. We're here in our show kitchen uh, showing you some uh, demo of a countertop template. Basically, we want to replace this countertop with a new one, and instead of going through and templating it out with cardboard and paper and pens and pencils, we're going to use the 3D Disto to scan the wall import that into a computer program so that we can export it out uh, to a CNC machine file so it will fit like a glove. So um, right now I have the 3D Disto set up in an optimal position to be able to capture all the points without relocating, although sometimes relocation is necessary, the less you need to do it the better, um, just because of speed sake and that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to basically walk you through the steps so and show you how to uh, go through and template this. And I'm going to start by showing you that the Disto, or the Disto is connected with my tablet. And uh, you can see on the screen here that wherever I move the Disto, or wherever I move my pointer, the Disto is also following, and you can see it in the video as well. Um, so basically, we're just gonna we're gonna map out this back wall all the way around to this end panel on this refrigerator, and I'll hit maybe one or two points on the front of the countertop, which isn't necessarily necessary, but uh, but it'll just be just kind of add to the fun. So I'm gonna stand here for a little bit and get it going, and then I will. Uh, yeah, let's go. So the nice thing about the, the unit is when you're doing the template feature, or the auto scan is the better term for it, it will, the first point that you take, if you were to put a level line around the room, it would stay along that uh, level line. And so I'm going to just pick a point just slightly above the countertop. Um, I know this countertop is just a little unlevel, which is not a good thing, but uh, but I'm going to just keep it up a little bit so that we make sure we get all of our points that we need. And now I'm going to go to the auto scan feature and select the horizontal scan. And I'm going to pick the first point, which I already have the distance. It's kind of wrapped around behind the stove so you can't see it from the video, but you can see it on the screen. And then it asks you whether you want to go left, go right, or go in between two points. I'm just going to say go to the right. And I'm going to set it up for two inch increments right now. And now I can go and get a cup of coffee and take a break while all you templating people are going crazy with your cardboard and your uh, Sharpies and your knives and this this tool will just do the trick for you so um i do keep an eye on where it is this is a pretty straightforward um, project but uh get out of the way so you can see it on the wall it's going every two inches right now and you can pause it stop it at any time and change the interval which is what i do when i hit to the corners um, because right now it's just kind of going and you know when you're looking at the CAD file you'll see the the 16 inch on center studs as they kind of go in and out you know whoever framed it didn't do a perfect job this tool will capture that but when you get into the corner what's going to happen is there's mud joints there from the sheetrock that will, that you don't necessarily account for when you're doing a countertop or this tool will actually scan it and you'll be able to see in the CAD file um, so when I get closer to the corners, I change the scan interval to either one inch or a little bit less, maybe, just to get the best resolution. Um, so it is kind of nice. You just sit back and relax. I'm on 45, 46 points right now, and I haven't, I've literally only selected the first point. Um, so now I'm getting a little bit closer. When I get to 53, I'll pause it. And I'm going to change the scan interval to, let's do half an inch. 
now it, it was scanning every two inches, now it's going to scan every half an inch, and I'll let it just go right around that corner to give me the best resolution for what's going on there. And what's going to happen later is I'm going to come back and hit the absolute corner. Um, you know, this is kind of, you could be off quarter of an inch one way or the other because it's just doing it every half an inch. Now I'm going to pause it again and I'm going to change it to the two inch again. The first couple of times when you change the scan interval, it takes just a second or two for the unit to kind of like figure out where it is and then it will start into a routine again. We'll go a little bit faster. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing when I get over to this corner. I'm going to change the scan interval to the half an inch again. So at point Now I'm just backing it down to half an inch. When you also notice when you change like from one wall to the other, it takes the disto just a second to kind of catch up and figure out where it is. Um, that's not a it's not a problem with the unit, it's not an issue with the unit, that's just what it's doing. It's, it's doing all the calculations in the background. Um, so now we're coming along the uh, refrigerator end panel here and uh, it's going through lots of points and now I'm going to change the scan interval back to two inches. And then this should finish out this wall and then I'm going to come back around and, and do this other wall. nice thing with this scan is when you uh, take it into a CNC machine, every point that it's taking, it's drawing a point and a line between those points. So when you take it and you open it up in AutoCAD, you're able to take all those lines and connect them and make it a continuous polyline and then throw an offset on that so that you can assign a router to that scribed polyline, if you will, and uh, then you're able to use that to cut the back of the countertop too, and it really gives you a tight, um, tight thing. Sometimes when you're scanning, what happens is the corner will not, you know, you'll you'll miss the corner if your uh, increments are set up in a way that it, that corner doesn't get captured, but you are able to when you have paused. Uh, or when you've completed the auto part of the scan, you're able to go back to the previous point just before the corner and um, then go back to that corner in the room that you're in and, and kind of redefine where that corner is. Uh, I've gotten to a point more recently that I'm not necessarily doing this um, because it's easier to almost do that corner in the CAD environment. I mean, we're taking, our increments are so minute here that, that to extend a line, you know, and, and kind of like fill it that corner in is, is pretty decent. For this scan, um, it worked out because our, in, our increments were a little bit more uh, spread out than I would usually do in a corner. I'd probably go to half an inch, um, but for sake of time, you know, you can kind of see that just define that corner a little bit more. You can go into more detail if needed, uh, or you can mess with it in the AutoCAD environment to get the desired result. Um, and I've taken just a couple points to just redefine it, and then I'm just going to say that I am pretty much done. And the scan is finished. Uh, I've selected the check mark. Scan is finished. Everything highlights. Um, it draws a line from the beginning of the uh, scan to the end of the scan. 
not necessarily something that you need to keep. What I'm going to do next is just locate maybe two points on this front of the countertop and maybe one or two points on this front, probably two points so that I could recreate an AutoCAD and then that will tell me where the countertop is. Um, so I'm just going to go into the normal scan mode. There's no auto scan, there's no nothing. It's just going to be uh, just for me taking some points. And I'll come back over here so you guys can see everything as well. So now I'm just going to use the control unit to get the distal where I want it. And I'm zoomed in because the last one. So I'll select the point right here. Now what it did was it, it actually drew a line from the corner to the point I just took. I can mess with it in AutoCAD and delete it later, or I can actually just go right in and hit the trash can button and delete the line. And it just cleans up the drawing a little bit better. And now when I do the next point, it will draw a line between the two. I'm going to lock it this time because I want to keep, keep taking points and not having to go back to that home screen. So I'll take a point there, and then I'm going to take a point on this counter, which you should be able to see. Now we are getting a little bit of refraction, I guess you would call it, because uh, the countertop is a little shiny. Uh, I want to find out right. So I want to make sure it's not going to give me a The skewed angle, so I'm going to actually just hold my thumb there or something that makes it uh, not reflect, just to make sure I get the right one. This measurement isn't that crucial, anyways. I'm not, I'm not going to lose any sleep if it's slightly skewed because I know the countertop depth is supposed to be 25 inches from the back wall. So if for some reason that measurement looks a little funky in CAD, we can go back and see how that works you know, when we're doing our offsets and stuff. So again, same idea. It is slightly reflecting. So I'm going to hold my thumb there so that it's reflecting in that general area. And then to remind me what I'm doing, I'm actually going to just take a quick picture so that when I look at this later, I remember, you know, if this point looks a little weird, um, I'll remember that my thumb was there. All right, um, so now this, this countertop is pretty much scanned. Uh, the one thing I do want to do is come right back over to the range and then just hit the point where the countertop starts because that is also a crucial measurement. Make sure there's no spider webs in the way. Have had spider web mess up my dimensions. So and then we'll just go right back out to the top view and we can see here the countertop pretty much recreated. Um, I'm gonna call this good. Same idea for the other side, but uh, just to keep the video short and sweet, we'll call this good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just save this file and I'm going to export it. So I'm going to label this show. And make sure, it's always a good, good idea to just make sure that your file exports before you leave your project. Um, just in case there's an error or a glitch. Uh, I've only had it happen once, but it was nice that I was able to save it right there and not have to find out three hours after I was in the car. Alright, so we save the file and then we're going to do a quick export. And it looks like it's exporting fine. So the file was exported. And uh, now we are basically can keep going as much as we want or we can shut it off and 
try again the next day. So again, this was Adam Deary with AdvancedDimensions.com. We're showing you our show kitchen to like get you into how to do some basic tasks with the 3D Disto. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.